Hi, I'm back again. I'm very sorry. I went, my, my ba battery went out of power, so I had to plug my laptop in. So now we can continue again with Cloud Storage Connection, our helper class that we use to, to encapsulate all the logic that we need to, to open up a connection to table storage and to queues on the other side. So let's add a constructor here. And I have my personal um, uh, snippet here that I use all the times when I have to uh, open up connections to uh, Windows Azure Storage. And for this, uh, I use something, a uh, class that is called Cloud Storage Account. And for Cloud, cloud Storage Account, um, I need some usings using Microsoft dot uh, Windows Azure dot uh, first one and using Microsoft dot Windows Azure dot storage client uh, these two I need and then we can take a look at oh a role environment I'm sorry I'll use the Visual Studio to look up the using here and that's it and our application will just run in in Windows Azure so I can get rid of this stuff here and yep that's it let's take a look at these few lines of code I mean they are very, very simple what we do here and to point your attention to this one here we call cloud storage account from configuration setting and here we pass the name of a configuration setting uh, this again comes from the CS config and the CS dev file. There we can sto store centrally the connection string to, to Windows Azure storage. There is one important point here. It's called set configuration setting publisher. It's a helper method that you can customize in order to read the configuration setting values from different sources. In our case, we always use the already known method get configuration setting value but if your application sometimes runs in on premise sometimes it runs in the cloud you could add extra logic here to read for instance on premise the configuration data from your web.config file and if you run in azure you can read your configuration data from the cs config file for instance but in our case it uh, we assume that it always runs uh, inside azure development fabric or real azure and therefore it's fine to just call get configuration setting value with the config name that we pass exactly here and as soon as we have this cloud storage account, we can get a client for table storage, queue storage, and blob storage. Uh, we will use this, these things outside, so I will say this.table client and create a property for that, and we'll call this.queue client and create a property for that, and this.blob client, and let's create a property for the third one too. Let's clean it up a little bit. We have, of course, private setter here, uh, private setter, and private setter. Okay, that's fine. Now we have a connection to table uh, store, queue store, and blob store. Um, but that, that's not all. Uh, what we need here is we need to make sure that our queue exists and that our cli uh, that our table exists. And this is done uh, in the following way. We say this dot queue client dot get queue reference this one takes a queue name a queue address okay and so let's say the following let's use a helper here let's call this one public const string um so sorry string uh order queue name equals to order queue and let's say public const string order table name equals to order table or the payload table okay so that one's fine so we can say cloud storage connection dot order queue name store this one bar queue equals two and let's say queue dot create if not exists yeah. now we are we are have made really sure that the queue exists um, because if it doesn't exist, it has been created. And now we say var um, no uh, this dot table client and create a table if not exists. And again, we say cloud storage connection dot order table name. And now uh, also our table has been created. That's one perfect. 
maybe it is good at his store this Q thing here this dot order Q uh, because from outside it would be quite handy to uh, access to be able to access this Q from from outside the ready created member that's fine uh, please keep in mind that cloud table client cloud Q client and cloud blob client uh, don't really have any status. They do not, do not implement iDisposable and therefore we do we, we do not have to implement iDisposable for our cloud storage connection class 2. The reason for this is quite simple. Uh, under the hoods, queue storage, table storage and blob storage use REST and REST based API so there is no need to, to carry any, any heavy uh, disposable um, a state a state here so they are very lightweight uh, tables very lightweight objects okay cloud storage connections let's try to build this one build started and build succeed fine now we can use in our code behind file from our web role uh, the the class that we have just created so let's create a new instance of this one or con uh, or connection equals to new cloud storage cloud storage connection that's it and yep yeah, that's fine so we can immediately start for instance sending uh, sending our message into the queue um, you do this by saying connection dot order Q.add message and inside this message uh, the method demands a cloud queue message object new cloud queue message cloud queue message at the appropriate using and as you can see you can pass a message either by uh, um, specifying a byte array or by specifying a string content and I would suggest to say we have a or order ID equals to GUI dot new good and let's say here this one order ID dot to string Okay. Whoops. Third one. Yeah. That's it. That's all the code that we need to send the message into the queue. Someone else, the worker role, will listen to this queue and will start processing as soon as the queue, queue item appears. But we have not transported the play payload. We have just transported a signal that says, hey, worker, I have something to do for you but we don't tell the worker what to do. We need to transport the pay payload. As I said before, in this very simple example, it would be enough to, to transfer the whole order data here in this message queue. But in practice, a customer order consists of a lot of fields, a lot of properties, and therefore it is, it is um, appropriate to store the payload in another form of storage mechanism. And in this case, we use table storage. In order to be able to uh, file uh, to save something in uh, table storage, um, we need a class, a class that defines the schema for our table. Please uh, keep in mind that a table storage is is not a very uh, is is not a data store with a strict schema. Uh, in fact, table storage is just a kind of let's say key value pair storage. You have a so-called um, a so-called partition key plus a row key. These two properties together form the primary key in your table store. And for every uh, primary key, so for every combination of partition key and row key, you can store um, different uh, key value pairs. So every row inside your table can consist of different columns. That's a little bit strange for the for the SQL guys, but it is how it is. In our case, we need a class. The, the, the Windows Azure SDK demands a class that defines the schema at least uh, for our application here. And for this um, purposes, we create a class that we call order. And again, I have a cute little snippet here. I think it's, yeah, here we have a table type. Um, as I said, it's called order. Uh, the data service key we need a using here. Um, let's say, see if no, nope. we need uh, using system dot data dot services. No system 
dot service no we need which reference add reference system dot data dot services dot client system dot data dot oh sorry system dot data dot services dot common and here we should have the data service key yes that's